Good afternoon, everyone. Um, like Naomi said, my name is Christy, and um, we're just here to have a panel to discuss about um, just how <coughs> leadership has affected all of us as young people, especially how Goodler has affected each of us, um, changed either the course of our career paths and what we want to strive to do, or have just enabled us to be better leaders. Um, and so I'm actually going to have all of them introduce themselves, um, and I will start off with myself as well. Um, Again, my name is Christy. Um, I'm 19 years old. I go to Arizona State University. Um, Goodler has just kind of um, really brought me here to just give me skills and direction and where I want to go and how I want to um, just use innovation and new ways of thinking to really um, impact right now my campus and hopefully um, a greater community in the future. Hello, and uh, I'm Dalton Jacobson. I'm 21 years old, and I'm currently an international business student uh, in university. Hi, my name is Mika. I am 16 years old and I am in high school. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm 17 years old and I'm also in high school. I'm a member of the Good Learn Incubator. Hi, I'm Rohan Shaw. I'm 14 and I'm a freshman. Okay, awesome. So for the first question I just kind of want to pose to you guys is obviously each of us have been um, have encountered Goodler in many different ways and they've um, connected us and given us different opportunities um, with other organizations and, our, and in our own efforts with different um, organizations that we've started. And so um, I just want to ask how did Goodler either um, pivot or completely change the direction that you have been going in? No, that's a great question. For me, I think the greatest way that Goodler has impacted me is uh, I was able to partake in uh, the United Nations Economic and Social Council's uh, Youth Forum in January uh, this year. And uh, it was really an incredible time. We've heard a lot about uh, the different organizations, the UNFPA, but uh, this is really a uh, kind of once a year gathering of youth from all around the world um, that are already engaging in a lot of projects that many of you are uh, are passionate about and working on and uh, and for me the greatest impact was I think to see the the drive and the energy and the charisma that youth from all around the world have I think I can so often just be kind of stuck in this bubble of what I see at home but I think it was very inspiring to see people in uh, very underdeveloped communities come to a world stage like that and and go, this is what I want to change. These are the issues that my family, my community are being faced with. And, uh, and this is what we're currently doing. And we're not sitting by and just letting it happen. But you know, we're engaging in social entrepreneurship, um, working with tech, with different platforms to really confront these complex, diverse problems. And, and I think for me, it really gave me a, a big perspective on, uh, on the role that public policy can play. And, uh, and even my own home environment of what we're trying to do. Um, I do a lot of work with uh, Hope Worldwide, um, and, uh, and I think walking away from it, I saw that there was a very um, steep uh, amount of inaction currently going on where I lived uh, in terms of youth engaging in public policy, of youth having a voice in these critical issues when youth make up about a quarter of the world's population. And, uh, and seeing that, man, this, this group are so underrepresented and have so little voice and, and trying to partner with groups that are maybe already on that line, but trying to find new ways to engage and, and really make uh, the voice of youth uh, represented. So that was a big uh, impact I took away from uh, being with Goodler at the United Nations. Awesome, yeah, so my experience was kind of similar to Dalton's. I went with Goodler to the United Nations um, Compact for Young People and Humanitarian Action, so that's held by UNFPA. Um, and so it was a really great experience for me because I had never really, I had been doing some of my own um, nonprofit and like kind of development humanitarian work before, but I had never really been able to be like a thought partner with people that had so many years of experience and were leading or like had really high positions at international NGOs. And so that whole week I, I got to participate in workshops and, um, and learn about the different initiatives that were happening at the UNFPA and at different uh, really large NGOs to engage more young people in humanitarian response and um, so that whole, the whole uh, week was really impactful to me and then I also was part of the youth incubator uh, which I think Sarah and, uh, will talk more about but for me that also taught me about systems thinking which was something that I had never like learned about before and I think I was able to connect it to some of my own thought processes that um, I had been working with in mind, but when you learn about an initial concept, um, like systems thinking, it really shifts your mind.
mindset and allows you to transform some of your existing work and proceed on new projects with uh, an entirely different mindset. So you're just trying to do short-term projects, really thinking about how to change systems. Uh, so yeah, that's how it really impacted my work. Yeah, just to add on to what Mahika said, I was also a member of the Googler Incubator. And a lot, large part of the work that we were doing there was a lot learning to take a product that could create social change and put it through like the product development cycle. And a large part of what Google helped to facilitate was learning the terminology. So we learned about different stakeholders as well as things like systemic change and that really helped to influence the way we tackled these issues and um, this, the, sort of the thought process we had behind it. So it was a great opportunity to learn more and um, really develop my skills as an entrepreneur. So I came into the Youth Incubator program this summer with a product in my mind that I started putting an idea around and to be able to put it into play and uh, actually build it out was like truly a dream to me. And to, be, to learning how to become a leader and leading a team, the Incubator just taught me how to, like, like Sarah mentioned, how to go through the product management, management cycle and learn and how to develop a, a project that you had in your mind and make it an actual product. Yeah, it seems like all of us, in a sense, have just learned something that can impact like the rest of the legacy of our careers, and it's something that we're like constantly learning and growing in and changing it. And so, you guys have already learned so much. So, my next question is, what made you come back again this year? What are you hoping to grow in more and learn? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's opportunities like this. I think that really give me life, and I think the conversations um, that are had in atmospheres like today, um, I think are crucial, um, are absolutely critical. I think that's the biggest thing that brings me back to, to things like this, um, massive forums like this, to be able to talk and engage with, I think, people on so many different levels of what is it that you're doing in, in your community? Um, how is that going? How is that working? What's going great? Um, how can I take that and maybe flip it and use it where I'm at, you know, and maybe this completely, what it looks like, unrelated problem, but has, you know, great impact. Um, and so I think that's the biggest thing that keeps me coming back is, uh, is the connections and the conversations that are had. Yeah, and I, I can kind of relate to that too. I feel like when I was, like, I've grown up in Silicon Valley and I oftentimes feel like um, not many people are as interested in the same things I am in humanitarian work or social impact because uh, people are looking to go into some fields that could be used for social impact, like technology and, um, and computer science and all this stuff, but a lot of times they're not like looking for how to turn that into something that's for even good in the world, and so sometimes it feels like I'm not, like, I'm very disconnected with my peers because they're not, like, on the same page as I am about what, what they want to do, and um, so it's forums like these that show me that there are people in this local community that I live in that are uh, aligned with my ways of thinking, so uh, I think that it's really important to bring, especially in this place of Silicon Valley where there's so much talent and so much innovation and entrepreneurship, to connect that, especially with young people who are so easily influenced, uh, allow them to channel that into doing good in the world. Yeah, just to add on to that, there's like a lot of really inspiring people out here today, so uh, events like this are like great networking opportunities to hear some of those ideas, to engage in some of those conversations, meet new people, get new ideas, and uh, just with more connections. For me, what made me come back to Goodler was the mentoring that was around us from Alina to collaborators like Janelle. It was just it was truly special to work with you guys because the, the encouragement and support that you guys gave and the new and the new ideas you you put in my head is just was just a truly special moment. Yeah, I think it's so cool. We've been like just hearing what each of you is saying individually, I can relate to it like so much. Just because a lot of what we learn tends to be counterintuitive or we want to think of the surfacey solutions or want to get the quick fix and it's like no we constantly have to train our minds to do that differently and and Goodler can provide that through the people um, that either run it or that are connected to it or that are networked to it because we need that training and we need that understanding because it's not something that we can think of naturally and I just that's always been the thing that I think has even driven me back um, over and over again whether it's while I'm back home through um, just like 
emails and Skype or whatever it is, just constantly asking questions and constantly learning and getting that encouragement and seeing that, okay, there are older generations that are investing in us and we and they want us to grow and they want to see us succeed. And it's that encouragement that we always gravitate to, you know, and it's that, um, that movement that we get together that keeps drawing us back, which I think is so cool. Um, I also just want to ask too, just kind of more in depth of like, what has each of your experience been with the organizations that you've either been a part of or started and um, just really um, what you've done and how you've um, kind of just grown through your experiences with various um, nonprofits and with the UN and things like that. Yeah, uh, so as I had mentioned earlier, a large organization that I do a lot of my work with um, focusing on humanitarian effort is Hope Worldwide. And, uh, and even what I've been learning via uh, Goodler and the United Nations has made a significant impact in that. And uh, I think the biggest things with that, I think, has been to slow down, to you know, break down what looks like to be a very complex issue and really get to the core of it and challenge conventional ways of thinking. And uh, as I've been talking about, to have great conversations with peers where I live and not just in my neighborhood, but in underdeveloped areas, um, to have those kinds of conversations and, uh, and to go, okay, how can I dig into this a little bit deeper than what otherwise is being done right now? Um, and so I say that's probably the biggest thing that it's about. Yeah, and I, so I think that um, Goodler is so awesome because, like Sarah said, they teach us a lot of the terminology, but also a lot of the methods that I had no idea about because these aren't things that you learn in school, um, like how to brainstorm and how to, um, you know, refine the solution and test it and use human centered design and all these different things. Like nobody's teaching you how to do this, and yet if you want to be an entrepreneur, which so many people in Silicon Valley do, you need to know those kinds of things. And so when I was at the UN, we were doing these brainstorming sessions, and I learned how they manage like these really high level uh, people who have these great ideas. It's it's sometimes kind of hard to facilitate brainstorming when there are so many ideas. And so I looked at how they were, um, you know, putting up a parking station of ideas and using post-it notes and like sharpies and breaking people down into groups and uh, co-creating these different um, solutions and. And method. So I think that that plus when we were back in Silicon Valley, like not in the uh, UN, but even in the social impact incubator, um, we were doing some of the same things. So I, I think that just knowing those kinds of processes, I know that when I've uh, been part of different projects, I've like started to recycle those and use those because it's kind of hard to know how to facilitate something when you haven't been a participant in it yourself. So I think that that's something that tangibly I've taken away. So the project that Mahika and I, as well as two of our other founders who are here today, worked on was called Apollo Box, and you're going to hear a little bit more about it later. It was a subscription box for uh, first through third graders to help them uh, get exposed to um, music at an earlier age. And um, a large part of what we did was um, take an, our idea from like brainstorming phases through um, development, building out a business model, to finally being able to pitch in front of like a, a team of judges. And the whole experience that was facilitated by the Goodler Foundation was just really useful and it helped us really understand the dynamics of a team and how um, leaders sort of arise and the best way to um, manage a product through the product development cycle. So um, before, before I went to the youth incubator program I was talking about, I had a project in mind, but I had it in a far-fetched idea to do something in Tanzania, which across, across the ocean was almost impossible now that I think back to it. I don't know because I didn't have any partnerships there. But what Goodler did when I started talking to Galena was starting to narrow my idea down and trying to kind of like finding the exact same thing I was doing using technology and, and engaging technology especially to do the same thing around this area in Silicon Valley. And so Galena and I found, found, Galena and I found a topic of there was an issue with reading in the United States and then I started a project around that and now, and now, now, now that I think back to it, like that was one of the best decisions I've ever made. <laughs> um, so with all the experiences that you guys have all accumulated and um, just really been able to take in, what is your piece of advice to someone who may be looking to just start, who hasn't even really gotten anything off the ground but just has that desire to start? Wow, yeah. Um, I think 
Uh, that is obviously step number one, is having the desire there. But I think practically what it looks like just to get that off of the ground is just getting help. I think no one can just do it on their own. Um, and I think uh, the partnerships, the, you know, the, I guess the community that you build, the connections, the network, all that, it, it makes the biggest difference in the world. So I think as simple as it might be, I think just getting people to help you, asking great vulnerable questions of, What's the weakness in this? You know, how might you know uh, this be exposed? What are some of the, the difficulties that you see might come up from it? And uh, I think just getting a lot of help. Mm, I think let's see. I, I would agree with getting help and, and starting to build a team because a lot of us came in with our own individual ideas to the incubator. Um, uh, some of us had already started things and. Some of us had like additional products that we wanted to add on, but eventually, like especially at this stage in your life, when you're like high school, especially, it's really hard to manage a project in addition to your academic work. And if you try to be a lone wolf and do everything yourself, you're probably not going to be able to accomplish what you could. So teamwork isn't just because it's uh, you know fortifying your project and helping you grow. It's also just because like it's probably impossible as one person when you are going to school 35 hours a week, you can't just like start adding a full time job of running it an organization or a club or an online initiative or anything. Uh, and so I definitely would say try to build a team, figure out, and also what, one thing that we talked about in the incubator a lot was, um, and I think it might be the most important thing that I learned was the strengths finder test. So if you know your own strengths, try to find people that don't have those same strengths but have different ones. Uh, because what I learned is I had barely any executing strengths and so I needed people who are more analytical and thinking in that way because I'm like I do mainly humanities and I don't really like computer science or like robotics or STEM stuff and so I needed people who are more analytical and um, thought in that way because for me I'm like super ambitious but I don't always think about like the tangible like planning processes because I'm like my ideas are all over the place so sometimes it's really nice to have people that are completely different from you because that's what the, the kind of people you need in your network. Yeah, to add on to that, a big part of like finding like a team of individuals like starts with coming to events like this today. Just by uh, putting yourself out there and surrounding yourselves with like-minded individuals, like you can start to form those connections to get you started on those projects and build communities so that like you guys can like keep yourselves accountable. You know, make sure that um, you are on the right track and sort of following up with the works of others who want to do similar things to you. Uh, for me, one of the biggest pieces of advice I have that one of someone my parents actually gave me was do research, research first, because if you find a problem and you start trying to solve it with this crazy idea, once you build this product, once you build this idea out, it actually might not work in the future. So I would say you want to take your time and do research first to make sure that your project will end up working in the end. Yeah, I just want to give you guys um, just a big thank you just for sharing your thoughts and sharing your experience on a level that um, all of us can just relate to, um, whether we're in high school or college. I think it's just awesome to just see people up here who have gone through it and are willing to share what they learned in this um, just unique stage of life. So, um, yeah.